prevailing winds live worldwide. Earth Null School today. I'll leave a link below for you so that you can actually see this. It's very interesting to watch. Prevailing winds that blow predominantly from an individual direction over a particular point on the Earth's surface. The dominant winds are the trends in direction of wind with the highest speed over a particular point on the Earth's surface. The regions prevailing and dominant winds are enacted by global patterns of movement in the Earth's atmosphere. In general, easterly flow occurs at low and medium latitudes globally. In the mid-latitudes, westerly winds are dominant and their strength is largely determined by the polar cyclone. In areas where winds tend to be light, the sea breeze or land breeze cycle is the most important to the prevailing winds. And in areas which have variable terrain, mountain and valley breezes dominate the wind pattern. Highly elevated surfaces can induce a thermal low, which then augments the environmental wind flow. Wind roses are tools used to determine the direction of the prevailing wind. Knowledge of the prevailing wind allows the development of preve prevention strategies for wind erosion of agricultural land, such as across the Great Plains. Sand dunes can orient themselves perpendicular to the prevailing wind regime within coastal and desert locations. Insects drift along with the prevailing wind. While birds are able to fly more independently of it, prevailing winds in mountain locations can lead to significant rainfall gradients within the topography, ranging from wet across windward-facing slopes to desert-like conditions along their lee slopes. Prevailing winds can have differences due to the uneven heating of the earth. A wind rose is a graphic tool used by meteorologists to give a succinct view of how wind speed and direction are typically distributed at a particular location. Presented in a polar coordinate grid, the wind rose, the wind rose shows the frequency of winds blowing from particular directions. The length of each spoke around the circle is related to the frequency that the wind blows from particular direction per unit time. Each concentric circle represents a different frequency emanating from zero at the center to increase frequency at the outer circles. The trade winds, also called trades, are the prevailing pattern of easterly surface winds found in the tropics near the Earth's equator, equator equatorward of the subtropical ridge. These winds blow predominantly from the northeast in the northern hemisphere and from the southeast in the southern hemisphere. The trade winds act as a steering flow for tropical cyclones that form over a world's oceans, guiding their path westward. Trade winds steer African dust westward across the Atlantic Ocean into the Caribbean Sea, as well as portions of Southeast North America. Westerlies and their impact? Well, the westerlies are the prevailing, westerlies are the prevailing winds in the middle latitudes between 35 to 65 degrees latitude, which blow in areas poleward of the high pressure area known as the subtropical ridge in the horse latitudes. These prevailing winds blow from the west to the east and steer extra tropical cyclones in this general direction. The winds are predominantly from southwest to the northern in the northern hemisphere and from northwest in the southern hemisphere. They are strongest in the winter when the pressure is lower over the poles, such as when the polar cyclone is strongest, and weakest during the summer when the polar cyclone is weakest and when pressures are higher over the poles. Together with the trade winds, the westerlies enable a round-trip trade route for sailing ships crossing the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, as the westerlies lead to the development of strong ocean currents in both hemispheres. The westerlies can be particularly strong, especially in the southern hemisphere, where there is less land in the middle latitudes to cause the flow pattern to amplify, which slows the winds down. The strongest westerly winds in the middle latitudes are called the Roaring Forties, 
between 40 and 50 degrees south latitude within the southern hemisphere. The westerlies play an important role in carrying the warm equatorial waters and winds to the western coasts, coasts of the continents, especially in the southern hemisphere because of its vast oceanic expanse. The westerlies explain why coastal North America tends to be wet, especially from North Carolina to Alaska during the winter. Differential heating from the sun between the land, which is quite cool, and the ocean, which is relatively warm, causes areas of low pressure to develop over land. And this results in moisture-rich air from the Pacific Ocean to flow from the west, resulting in frequent rainstorms and wind on the coast. This moisture continues to flow eastward until orthographic lift caused by the coast. Cascade, Columbia, and Rocky Mountains cause a rainbow shadow effect, which limits further penetration of the systems and associated rainfall eastward. And this trend reverses in the summer, when strong heating of the land causes high pressure and tends to block moisture-rich air from the Pacific from reaching land. This explains why most of coastal North America in the middle latitudes experiences dry summers despite abundant rainfall in the winter. The polar easterlies, polar easterlies also known as polar Hadley cells, are the dry, cold, prevailing winds that blow from the high pressure areas of the polar highs at the north and south pole towards the low pressure areas within the westerlies at high altitudes. Like trade winds and unlike the westerlies, these prevailing winds blow from the east to west and are often weak and irregular due to the low sun angle. Cold air builds up and subsides at the pole, creating surface high pressure areas, forcing an outflow of air towards the equator. That outflow is deflected westward by the Coriolis effect.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.